Well, good morning, good afternoon, good, e good evening to everyone around the world in attendance. Um, thank you so much for joining us at this Global Cleveland's 2021 International City Cities Program. Uh, my name is Sanjeev Kapoor, and I'm a board member uh, of Global Cleveland, as well as a past uh, board member of the Cuyahoga County Public Library. So I, I do understand how important libraries are. In fact, I remember when I joined the board of the Cuyahoga County Public Library, uh, the view was that libraries were not that important with the advent of the internet. But in fact, as we all know, they are very important in a broad range of activities from education and after school programs for children for job seeking for adults and helping prepare resumes and other activities and and they really are a vital part of a community uh, as we all know and uh, it's so i'm just honored that i'm able to make this introduction today uh, along with the uh, president of the cleveland public library felton thomas who's uh, kindly joined us as well, which is uh, one of the five-star libraries uh, of um, this country. And they're only, uh, in, in, in terms of size of libraries, there are only five five-star uh, public libraries, and uh, Cleveland Public Library is one of them in the country. Uh, before I begin, I would like to thank the sponsors who are critical in making this conference happen. Uh, they are Swage Lock, Medical Mutual, Platform Brewery, Ilrish, The Link Inc., Corner 65, U.S. Together, and 12 Literary Arts. Uh, I am pleased, obviously, to introduce our sister libraries panel, where we will see videos produced by our own Cleveland Public Library, which, as I mentioned, is a prestigious five-star award-winning library and four sister libraries, followed by a discussion of the relationship between our libraries and our cities. I, I think, unfortunately, one of our uh, cities' libraries was unable to join, but still, I'm looking forward to uh, the discussion. Global Cleveland is proud to be hosting our third annual Sister Cities Conference. This conference celebrates the partnerships and connections that the city of Cleveland has built with our sister cities via economic and cultural exchanges. Cleveland has held the door open to newcomers for generations, and over the last 57 years, 23 global cities have joined that journey. Cleveland's sister city relationships broaden our perspective and possibilities. We are excited to announce that next year, our fourth annual Sister Cities Conference will be held in person during the week of October 17th. We cordially invite you to all join us next year in person to experience this wonderful conference together and enjoy all the delights Cleveland has to offer. Together, we would also, today, we would also encourage you to take a chance on broadening your horizons by participating in the chance to win a trip to Italy in partnership with Italian Tours by Diana to celebrate our 10th anniversary. The lucky winners will get to travel to our Italian sister city, Vicenza, Italy. Italian Tours by Diana is a boutique travel agency in Rocky River, Ohio, focused on crafting custom journeys to Italy and Europe. This eight-day Italian journey will introduce you to Vicenza, Vicenza, Venice, Florence, and Rome, and many beautiful destinations in between. You can purchase tickets at our website, globalcleveland.org. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our moderator for this session, who will be Dr. Peggy Nozomo. Dr. Nozomo is the Global Education Librarian at Kent State University and a member of the Global Understanding Research Initiative at Kent State. She previously worked as an African Studies Librarian at the Institut Francais de Recherche en Afrique. French Institute for Research in Africa in Nairobi, Kenya. She is the editor of the Global Perspectives column in the Journal of Library Administration. She holds a PhD in Library and Information Science from the University of Western Ontario, Canada, and an MA in French translation from Kent State University, and 
and MLIS from McGill University in Canada, a really global reach. Her research interests are international in scope and include multilingual information access, information literacy, international and comparative librarianship, computational linguistics, information seeking behavior services for multi multicultural populations, libraries and advocacy and user experience research. Take it away, Peggy. Peggy, I give you the floor at this point. Yeah, yeah hi. Um, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that introduction. I was just expecting to come and introduce our very special um, uh, visitors and speakers here today. And I would like to do that so that I don't take any more of, of our time here. But I'm always so excited to be able to be part of these kinds of um, panels or these kinds of discussions to learn more about library systems in other parts of the world. And, and so today here, we, ha we have representations from the sister cities, um, libraries, um, especially we have representation from Cleveland Public Library, which is uh, our main contact with these other library systems. And so I'd like to um, introduce Dr. Felton Thomas, who is the director of the Cleveland Public Library uh, since uh, January 2009. Um, he has launched many initiatives uh, aimed at addressing community needs in, in, in Cleveland here in the areas of technology, education, and economic development. Um, Mr. Felton earned his undergraduate degree in psychology from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and his master's in library science from the University of Hawaii. His awards and accomplishments are many. <laughs> um, the latest one being named the 2019 Community Leader of the Year by Cleveland Magazine. And he has also uh, been named as mover and shaker by the Library Journal and as acting fellow in the Urban Library Council's Executive Leadership Institute. He is also past president of the Public Library Association. Felton currently serves as a trustee on many boards here in Cleveland, including um, on the United Way of Greater Cleveland University Circle, Greater Cleveland Food Bank, the Cleveland Museum of Art, and the Cleveland School of Arts. And um, he lives in Shell Heights with his wife and uh, two daughters. And um, he's also an accomplished musician. So he wears many hats, <laughs> apart from being a librarian. And so I welcome uh, Mr. Felton Thomas. Uh, to tell us a bit about uh, the Cleveland Public Library and also the collaborations that he has with these other libraries. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nizamo. Before I show our video, I want to first thank uh, Sandeep Kapoor for that wonderful introduction of you and of me and the Cleveland Public Library. Um, while he speaks to the fact that um, we were a part of the uh, you know, we are a five-star library, one of the top five libraries in the country. He didn't mention that the Cuyahoga County Public Library that he led for many years as a board member was has been ranked number one for the, all of those five past years. It is a wonderful organization. And our county is well served by having two of the top five libraries in the country all right, right next to each other. So we're very fortunate as far as what our community sees around public library. Mm -hmm. So. I want to show you a little video about our library and our city, and then I'll come back and then I'll have some, some observations about why this is important and what our connection with libraries across the country have been. Cleveland Public Library is at the center of Cleveland Public Library is at the center of Cleveland Public Library is at the center of Curiosity and Knowledge Individual and Community 
पैकिंग फिर से पीपल एंड स्पेस नेबरहुड सिटी नीड एंड वांट Trade and do. So what you saw there was a little bit about our city. For those of you who haven't had the opportunity, and many of you hopefully will have the opportunity to come visit us next year, you'll get to see a city that many people don't know enough about. The city of Cleveland has not only one of the top five libraries possibly in the world or library systems, we also have one of the top five museums of art in the world, the top five symphonies in the world and the Cleveland Symphony and the Cleveland Orchestra and our Cleveland Museum of Art. And so it's a worldwide uh, city that we believe um, punches pound for pound with any city in the world, right? And as the library director, I've been very fortunate to have this opportunity to lead this library. Um, when I came here, I moved here from Las Vegas, right? I didn't assume what I would be um, taking over. I knew this was one of those great libraries in the country, but I didn't know much um, about the city as a whole. And I quickly began to understand that the city was a city that had a broad history in the uh, immigrants that had moved here and made the city what it is. So we're very fortunate uh, to have some of the, some large communities uh, from many of your countries that are represented here. And that's why we have the sister city program that we do. Uh, and we're very fortunate and I have learned a great deal from being able to come and visit some of the cities. Um, two cities who that I have gone and visited that I think we've taken the most from and worked uh, within the Cleveland Public Library has been our work with Ljubljana, Slovenia, as one of our sister cities, and Beit Shan, Israel. And so I'll tell you a little bit about both of those programs that have helped us and, and, and moved us forward here in the city of Cleveland and why having this opportunity to share what we all do is very helpful in being able for all of us, hopefully, to learn some things that we can bring back to our systems. In Ljubljana, I was happy uh, 10 years ago, lucky enough to be able to walk around and visit some of their libraries, their National Library of Slovenia and their public libraries. And one of the things I recognized was that at a desk, they just had a booklet. In that booklet, uh, anyone who wanted to teach a class could just write in what they thought they were expertise, had expertise at. And basically, if anyone else who walked in, um, looked at that booklet and said, I want to learn photography from so-and-so. And they would write their name in. And if they got eight people to sign up, they would allow people to basically teach a class and they would give them the space. And it was a very novel idea, not a lot needed for it, just the time to give people the opportunity to write in and then read it. But it showed that the community members have as much talent as some of the experts, and we should give them the opportunity to share that as a public library. And so we do that here, and many may not know that our Cleveland Public Library has the tagline of being the people's university. So we see that the people can, be, can take the information they have, and many of us have expertise that most may not know about, just like you know the tagline that I'm a musician, I'm a drummer, um, most people wouldn't think of the librarian as being a drummer, but I've, you know, I've been part of a, a number of bands. And so I could teach a class during this process. So that's what I learned from Lubana, Slovenia. From Beit Shan, Israel, I took the understanding that uh, what they do in Beit Shan is they let the young people run their library system, right? So you go into their library system and it's all kids from the age of 10 to, to 17 and they run the library. And I, I walked in and I looked and I couldn't see the librarian and he was in the back and I was like, why are all the kids out front running everything? He says, that's the strategy. We sh the kids learn leadership by actually running the library. And at first I thought, oh, he's just lazy. 
right? He just wants to sit back and be able to have the kids run the library. But after a while, I started to realize that having the kids put on programs, having the kids, you know, decide what was going on the shelf was a learning tool for them and that they would feel better about themselves by actually doing that. So we came back and we tried it with one of our libraries and it's very hard in the United States and it may be in your countries because we get in the habit of telling kids how they should do things. So actually listening to them and letting them make the decisions is very difficult, but it's been a great learning experience for us. So those are two examples of that. I really hope that I have the opportunity to visit some of your libraries and be able to understand what you do that is special so that we can bring that back to Cleveland. And I hope that you are able to join us next year here in Cleveland so we can show you what's very special about Cleveland and you can bring that back to your country. Thank you. Oh, wow, that was wonderful. Um, uh, the bit that you shared about the other libraries, uh, that is really, really great. Um, I want us to continue learning from each other and hearing from the other libraries as well. Next, I'm gonna introduce, um, I think they're from Volgograd, uh, Tim uh, Timoshev, Pavel Timoshev. I think you are there with uh, several of your um, colleagues. I uh, yes. don't know if Svelana is there, Acting Director Svelana. Yes. Volgograd State Public Scientific library and so i'll let you take away introduce yourselves introduce your team and um thank you yes so we uh, we are from uh Volgogra state public scientific library and i would like to introduce uh, our team uh, first of all this is Ivana kasovtsu she is acting director uh, she is the most experienced librarian in our region because uh, she has been working in this field for, uh, for, for more than 40 years. And uh, in this particular library, she has been working for 15 years. And uh, she knows all this sphere in details. Um, and so it's so-called Librarian Encyclopedia of the Volgograd region. Uh, and then uh, one more person, she is uh, uh, Vera uh, Spirina, and uh, she is uh, head of our um, department. And uh, her department uh, is responsible for internal processes of the library. And uh, Natalia Kizichuk, she is head of uh, department of uh, events and uh, projects, uh, external relations and project. So uh, first of all, uh, I give the floor to Svetlana Kasovtsova. She is acting director now, as I said. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Меня представили. Зовут Светлана Косовцева. И в настоящий момент я исполняю обязанности директора библиотеки. Наш директор, к сожалению, не смогла лично принять участие в конференции, но заранее записала видеообращение, которое мы сейчас с вами можем увидеть. And uh, now we'll be able to to see to watch it and listen to her. But uh, I just apologize is if I am a little bit wrong with this technology. Can you see it? Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья. Я приветствую вас из Стенкова, Градская область. 
ну и написали в научной библиотеке. Я рада нашему сотрудничеству и рада, что мы вновь встретились с вами онлайн. К сожалению, присутствовать лично я не могу, поэтому записываю вот это видеообращение. Уверена, что э, наши взаимоотношения будут долгими, теплыми и дружественными. Мы реализуем с вами много очень интересных проектов. Спасибо. Unfortunately, I can't participate myself in this uh, great event, and uh, I wish you good Hello. work, uh, good discussion, and uh, I hope that uh, our contact will uh, Hello, Pavel. continue for Pavel, can you switch years, the video and, back? Because uh, you, uh, the, you, you, I think you uh, left the video on accident. Out, uh, We can hear it, but we can't see it. Sorry? Oh, we can hear the video, but we can't see it. I think you uh, accidentally clicked out of it when you, when we were just seeing the, we were just seeing this window. Uh, okay. Uh, we, um, I hope we'll be able to demonstrate to you uh, the video presentation. Uh, Just one moment. No problem, Pavel. If you have any, if any problems, I can help. Can you can you see it now? Uh, no. Try try sharing your screen again. Uh, we can't, we can't see it. Try. You see the small. Um. Uh, yeah, uh, can you just describe your video instead? Uh, I'm sorry about the technological difficulties. Yes, Thank you. this is what we are going to do. We, we have to... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Here. Uh, so now, uh, yes, we'll describe our video because most of us uh saw this video uh we presented it in, in, in july and uh, we added just a few more facts which we'll tell you about в нашей библиотеке более 120 лет. Она, безусловно, уникальна, поскольку все это время она непрерывно была связана и с культурой, и с историей, и с развитием молодых городов. Она превратилась в настоящий региональный культурно-посетительный методический центр. Наша библиотека объединяет вокруг себя более 700 библиотек Волгоградского региона. Um, uh, as um, our library is more than 120 years old, and its history and development is tightly linked uh, to the city development. At present, the library has been a regional informational, cultural and educating and methodological center that combines more than 700 libraries all over Volgograd region. I, I'm sorry, we have, can we make a pause? Uh, because of some technical uh, problems and it will take us three or four minutes maybe. Uh, I, I have to apologize if you don't mind. Okay. And then we'll, we'll join uh, you soon because we'll try to arrange. Uh, maybe next person can uh, start saying something and then we'll continue. Uh, okay, that, uh, that sounds good. Um, we'll come back to you later. In the meantime, I think we can continue with the program and then we'll come back to you. All right, so I want to introduce next Annie um, Petrick. Petrick, did I pronounce that correct? 
Petrak. Petrak. Yes, you said it fine. Yeah. So uh, she is um, the first American to be employed in the Czech library system. So although she's American, she's living abroad in the Czech Republic. And in addition to her master's degree in public health and TESOL teaching certificate, she has a decade of professional experience in the education, tourism, hospitality, and nonprofit sectors, as well as having worked as a freelance writer, interpreter, and translator. So she speaks Czech. Is that the language? I do, yes. That's yes. My, Czech is my third language. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, she speaks several languages there. Um, she is passionate about public health, social justice, and sharing information about best practices in education for both people and animals. Uh, so um, one of her passions or two of her passions are animals and reading. Um, and in her spare time, she can be found doing outdoor sports and training her animals. So she'll tell us a little bit more about the Czech library system and how she's been involved there. Annie, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Pe thank you, Peggy, and welcome to everybody. It's wonderful to see your faces, and I, along with my colleagues, certainly hope that next time we meet, it will be in person, and that the pandemic will be behind all of us. Uh, I have a short video about the library, but uh, my colleagues prepared it for a different promotional activity, and it's in Czech. So I wanted to give a little explanation about our library and how it functions in our region. And then I'll show you the video and I'll translate it little by little. The video itself is short, so I should be able to keep it under 10 minutes altogether. Basically, in our city, Usti Nad Labem, we have, the, we have the main regional and city library. Our library functions as both of those things. The name in Czech is the Severočeska Vědecká Knihovna, which means North Bohemian Research Library. We have two buildings, which, was, which you'll see in the video. Uh, one part is called the Lidova chest, chest, which is the uh, the people's part, the people's part, and the other part is the Vyedetska chest, which is the research part. Now, in the you'll see it more in the video, obviously, but in the people's part, there is uh, where we keep all of our literature, our history. Uh, there's a multimedia center. There's a place where you can uh, check check out music or uh, sheet music. That's where our children's section is as well. And then the research part where I work, that's where we have the, uh, the novels, the, or sorry, excuse me, not the novels, the nonfiction section. And there's also uh, various study rooms and there's the foreign language literature section, which has novels and nonfiction. Um, the library itself has really become more developed in the starting in the second part of the 20th century. Um, the buildings that have been reconstructed for our library were belonged to wealthy patrons of the Usti region uh, before the Second World War. Then uh, it was a German family. And so after the Second World War, obviously, they were not allowed to stay here any longer. And so the their buildings were first donated, donated to the state under communism. And after communism, then there were started to be more reconstructions to make the library part of... Um, the cultural life of the Czech Republic. Geographically speaking, we are a half hour south of the German border and an hour north of Prague. And uh, with that, I'm going to show the video. And first, the first thing you'll see is the Lidova chest, the people's part. My colleague will take you through the children's department and show you what the inside of the uh, people's part of the library is. And I'll give it, get into more detail after uh, the video is finished about how the library functions in the region. So moment, please. Can you see all right? Vítejte v Severočeský vědecký mě podíváme se společně dovnitř. Yes, we can. Jsme v dětském oddělení, kde najdeme pohádky, první čtení, příběhy pro děti, leporela. Ale dětský není jenom pro malý, máme tady young adult, tezi sci-fi nebo třeba horory. Lidová půjčovna, dospělý oddělení, najdete tady klasiku, novinky, čtení k maturitě, ale i třeba super výběr komiksů. Jdeme dál. So, uh, quick pause. 
uh, my colleague is about to take you from the people's parts to the research part. What she showed you first was the children's section, and then she showed you the part that's for adults that has the novels, has um, some, some historical literature as well, but that's like the people's section of the library. And now you'll see the research part, which will include the foreign languages department, as well as some of the study rooms that we have available for university students. Podíváme se do multimediálního oddělení. Multimediální byste neměli minout, pokud scháníte CD, DVD, audio knihy nebo časopisy a knížky o hudbě. Projdeme se do vědecké části. So you have to walk about five minutes to the other building to get to the research part. Tak jsme u návratového automatu a jestli vás stresuje představa, že se počíte knížku, ale nestačíte ji vrátit v popírací době, tady ten automat funguje non-stop. Tak, teď jsme ve vědecké části. Ve vědecké půjčovně najdete odbornou literaturu, učebnice a třeba taky deskový hry, který si můžete půjčit domů. Když z vědecké části vyběhnete po schodech nahoru, najdete tam studovnu. Až si vyberete knížku, nezapomeňte se potom stavit v kavárně. And yes, we have a coffee shop at the library. And this Oddělení is my section. Oddělení literatury se ženete podklady, když se třeba připravujete na nějaký jazykový zkoušky, nebo když si chcete přečíst nějakou beletry, komiksy, nebo dětské knížky v originální vydání. Vědecká knihovna mají oddělení časopisů. Tak jo, já se s váma pro dnešek loučím. To bylo v rychlosti představení naší knihovny. Je spoustu míst, na kterých jsme ještě nebyli, ale to třeba příště. All right. Was that all okay? Did you yeah. was the audio all right and okay. A couple yes. of things that I didn't mention beforehand. Uh, my colleague also talked about uh, the automatic return machine. Uh, that's something that's a newer feature, but uh, previously you really had to just come back in person to return your book. And she yeah. mentioned that if you're if you would not have gone to the library before because you didn't want to lose your book, now you have a, a 24/7 option for returning your book, so you don't need to worry about checking out a book. You can right. you don't have to worry about that. Uh, she also mentioned a couple of parts in the library have places where you can actually rent board, borrow board games, like either for an hour, you can come and play them with your friends in one of the study rooms, or you can uh, take them and borrow them for another part of the library. We have a, a couple of clubs actually that do um, monthly, obviously before COVID, uh, monthly or biweekly uh, gaming nights where they would come and just play board games with people. And that's one thing that we're slowly trying to uh, get back into things. So, uh, what I wanted to talk about is how Czech libraries are, uh, to me as an American, it's kind of a more unique feature. It's, uh, it seems a lot like a lot of what I saw in the video about Cleveland, where the library is really a center of culture. Like it's a place, it happens to be a place where there's a lot of books where people can learn from, but, uh, this library has a lot of good connections with the community. We work very closely with the regional government. We work closely with smaller libraries throughout our region. And uh, our library director, I'm not the library director, but our library director is very passionate about combining culture and, and uh, education. She brings with her, she used to work in the health sector. She also worked as an educator. So she uh, is very passionate about combining as many sectors of society as possible through the library. So there are a lot of local groups that will come and ha they'll have their meetings in different parts of the library. They'll organize excursions to the library uh, that to fulfill different goals of theirs. Just uh, last week, we had a music concert here. There was, uh, it was called Meeting with Amadeus, and it was a celebration of the music of Mozart. So we had a pianist mm -hmm. come and you may have noticed the piano uh, in our, in the video, we have two pianos, one in each building. And while in general, people aren't allowed to play on them without permission, we actually have been able to host a couple of uh, small concerts in the different parts of the library. 
um, recently, uh, this is a very, very big deal for Czech culture. Uh, the, our library was able to work together with the Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of Education to have them sign a memorandum of agreement. And that means that instead of instead of these two sectors of society being completely separate, which a lot of times people tend to say, I have my work, I'm going to do the work that's right in front of me, and I'm not going to try to expand that or improve programming for anyone else. Uh, with this memorandum, uh, the Ministry of Culture has access to opportunities, including financial opportunities from the Ministry of Education and vice versa. And through the library as a bridge, the Ministries of Culture and Education will be able to work together to meet their individual and shared goals. The other exciting thing that our library has done this year is partner with the U.S. Embassy and the State Department to open uh, the American Library in the foreign language literature section. And that is my baby. I'm the coordinator of the American Library. So we are starting to offer programming for, for the public, uh, different cultural activities. For instance, we did, uh, we did a video and presentation uh, in commemoration of the September 11th terrorist attacks. Next month, we have a lecture planned for a US advocate and, um, and diplomat working with the Uyghur um, with the Uyghur refugee community, both in China and throughout the rest of the world. Uh, we have a presentation that I'm in charge of that's um, sharing about traditions from Dia de los Muertos and Halloween and other historical traditions throughout the world with how we celebrate death or how, what kind of relationship different people have with death. Um, and we also have observed a couple of uh, Czech holidays as well and brought we're basically bringing through the American Library here, the section of the American Library here, we're able to bring uh, educational materials and experts from all different parts of the world to address uh, gaps in knowledge here in the, in the northern region of the Czech Republic, or just to give exposure to people because we're in a poorer part of the country where we have some of the highest rates of poverty and some of the lowest rates of literacy and uh, completing high school and that sort of thing. It's a very industrial region or there's a lot of rural poverty like right outside of the city. So uh, it's very important to the State Department and to us that we get, uh, that we address the educational gaps in our region and that we bring these sorts of opportunities to our people here, to their people. I, I don't know exactly what your, what's the proper pronoun to use there, um, but that is the, that's the summary of what I've wanted to share about our library. I welcome any contact from any of you all. If you want to ask more questions at any point, Colin has my contact information. Uh, we, we are happy to work with you on um, research on different studies. Uh, if you want to come and stay with us and see a part of Central Europe where everything is way cheaper than the rest of Europe and everything is very beautiful, you are more than welcome to come and visit. We will take good care of you. Oh, wow. Uh, be careful. <laughs> be careful about welcoming us like that. We, we might all end up there. <laughs> the, to, true story, true story. Because both of these were uh, buildings were villas, there are still bedrooms. There are still oh, wow. places where people can sleep. And honestly, we had visitors from the United States just last month for a weekend. And uh, they set them up in one of the old bedrooms in one of the villas, and that, that's where they stayed. So they didn't have, they didn't pay for hotels. So oh wow! And what I'm saying, <laughs> thank is, you. And if you drink if you drink alcohol, beer is cheaper than water here, and it is the best <laughs> beer in in all of Europe. For, if you ask oh, a wow. person, we've got a lot of incentives there <laughs> to come and visit. Please come visit. Well, uh, yeah, we do have, I, at least I do have a lot of questions, but I also want to be mindful of the time and give um, Dahlia Yusri, what, did I pronounce your name right? And she is... Yes, that, Dahlia Yusri. Yusri, Yusri. She, yes, yes. She is from Alexandria and... Um, her library is called, uh, I'm trying to get my notes here, Biblioteca Alexandrina, right? Uh, he is the head of technical yes. skills unit in the library sector. She's an information and training professional and has 16 years of experience in this field. 
Dahlia has participated as a speaker and um, attendee in several conferences, such as the um, International Federation of Library Associations, IFLA, UNESCO, and others. She enjoys sharing her knowledge and experience with others and has designed many training programs and internships at the library where she works at, works at Biblioteca Alexandrina. And um, so we welcome you Dahlia, to tell us a little bit more about your library and you. uh, some of the programs that you have there. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, actually, it's uh, my pleasure to be with you um, today. Um, despite the uh, pandemic, uh, that with the disaster that we live, but actually, the other, in the other, on the other hand, it's a very good uh, chance to be with you through this um, online conference. So I will, um, during my video, I will uh, shed light on the historical part of the Biblioteca Alexandrina and the rebirth of the new Library of Alexandria. I will work with our community and the international side of our library. I will not talk a lot about the library. I will, li I will let you uh, enjoy or uh, hear my video and then we can uh, share any uh, questions. Okay, I will share my video. Can you see it? Can you hear it? See it? No, we can't see or hear. Okay. Is Colin much. on the call? Okay, here, share. Yeah. Now it's okay. Can you see it? Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, thank you so much. Can you hear me again? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. 
Um, um, do you have any questions that actually uh, within our programs that we offer? We target the uh, our community, uh, our the uh, and the international community too. So, do you have any questions? Anything you want? Anything you want to know more about it? When can we come and visit? <laughs> And can we move there? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> sure, you are. You will be almost then welcome, actually. Be right back okay. off to buy tickets. <laughs> I'm I'm not, out, out no, of it's on me. Don't worry, just come. And it all oh, will wow. be on me. Don't, wow. don't worry. <laughs> I like her. I don't <laughs> How, how does the library in Alexandria compare with that in Cairo? I mean, I, I assume Cairo is the capital, but I was just blown away by your new building and all you offer. Is Cairo as vibrant as Alexandria in terms of its library system? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. I, I could not hear well due to the internet your question. Would you repeat it again, please? Sure. Um, yes. I w was impressed by your resources and your buildings and what the programs you. you have. Thank and you so question, much. And the question is, how does that compare to what exists in Cairo, which is the capital of Egypt? Is it as magnif magnificent as what you have in Alexandria? Uh, actually, you know, the the uh, the old, uh, the ancient library of Alexandria was in, in Alexandria. And the rebirth of the uh, new library of Alexandria, it's almost near to the old place of the library. And because uh, Alexandria, as we mentioned, uh, or as I mentioned in the first uh, few slides in my presentation, it was one of the uh, one of the greatest uh, explo explosion of uh, explorer of Alexander. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you, Dala. So, Thank you so, much. Uh, so, so that's why the Library of Alexandria is in Alexandria, but actually we have the embassies of knowledge, one of our pr uh, projects, is that, that we have BA, Biblioteca Alexandrina, embassies of knowledge in all the uh, cities of um, Egypt. We have in the uh, universities, we have in, in Cairo University, we have in, uh, in, in, in all the um, cities of Egypt in the universities actually wow yeah I, I think we want to make sure we get pavel and volgograd in here because i think we're coming to the end of our hour here okay um can you unmute uh, yes we can hear you yes welcome back um, uh, we can hey, we were with you all the time we could hear and see everything but uh, there was a problem we had to change the laptop and uh, then adjusted it but at the same time we could hear the the, the, third, the presentation of Alexandria was great and uh, we also expect someday to visit you in person as well please. as Cleveland. please please do it and it will be our great pleasure actually Mm -hmm. So, shall we continue uh, and finish our uh, comments on the, the video and uh, the information we wanted to tell you about? Yes, please do. Um, unfortunately, we don't have too much time, but uh, keep it short and then uh, um, we can wrap here. Yes, the, the shortest. It will be the shortest. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we stopped at uh, the age of our uh, library and uh, the chain it uh, combines uh, like 700 libraries all over the region. Mm -hmm. And uh, the library does not only offers books to its visitors, we offer a public comfortable space for intellectual development. Uh, speaking clubs, on average we have uh, foreign, uh, 10 foreign languages taught uh, every year. And these languages are different, like from English to Japanese, uh, Chinese, and Korean. Okay, the, the, we have some interesting uh, societies 
uh, that uh, people can uh, share their interests, like, for example, people who are engaged in uh, uh, gardening can find their, uh, their counterparts here, or poster modeling, and, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, a number of literary clubs uh, also who are interested in uh, foreign literature. Uh, and uh, history, local history and bibliographic information is also provided by the library. Uh, we pay attention to, uh, to barrier-free environment. Uh, people with disabilities can use the services of library uh, without any limitations. So they can, uh, jo they can join any event. Uh, it doesn't matter which floor it is, and uh, get any information the library can provide them because we have uh, all the necessary equipment as well as specialized software. Uh, we are pleased that uh, Cleveland Sister Cities Conference uh, has become a platform not only for exchange of views among those who are professionally engaged in international cooperation, uh, but also opens opportunity for such uh, institutions as libraries and uh, because it opens us uh, opportunities for exchange experiences and uh, establish partnership, uh, partnership relations between uh, those who are, present, who are present here, like uh, these uh, libraries, and which we hope will come true someday. Uh, that mini summit uh, of sister cities libraries uh, was uh, of great and useful uh, was of great use for us because we saw the libraries uh, partners of uh, sister city, of Cleveland sister cities and uh, that's why we are grateful to organizers of this opportunity to take part in such an event. Uh, to meet colleagues from other cities and we'll help uh, to exchange our contacts and do uh, something uh, together. That's all. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. And thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, I think we are at the end of our, our presentations here or at the end of the hour here. Uh, but I just want to ask one last question of each one of you. Um, how has the pandemic changed how you offer services and um, what adjustments did you have to make? Anybody? Yes. <laughs> I, I, can, I can go first. Um, the pandemic obviously uh, put a big challenge on all of the cultural activities that we could offer in person. However, what we saw, um, and our, we have data to support this as well, uh, mm -hmm. interest in alternative uses of the library actually went way up with the pandemic because everybody was stuck at home. And so uh, it gave the opportunity to the library to expand the ebooks collection. And there were a lot more, there was an incredible um, growth in demand for the use of ebooks. Also, we, uh, our staff got to be better uh, educa educated and they got to increase their professional development and learning how to operate things digitally and how to present webinars, how to, uh, how to do events uh, virtually and distance wise. It helped us to increase our collaboration with, for example, the U.S. Embassy. We were able at one point to offer um, a chat with the chat with the diplomat. Uh, we invited the cultural attaché up to the library when we were allowed to have just a few people uh, in one place. We had uh, we had the diplomat and a few people from the embassy here with a few of our staff members, and we pr presented it over Zoom. And we had over 400 participants where they had to really quickly go and like as the presentation was going on, update their Zoom subscription to allow everybody to come in who was interested in participating. And, and even since then, that was that took place in May. That event took place in May. And in October, I still had people writing to me from local schools. Are you going to have another event like where you invited the diplomat? My, my students would be very interested in, in participating in that, whether we can have it in person or online. Um, and in the one regard, since in the Czech Republic, at least things are currently op more opened up. Uh, we are trying to make more of an emphasis on in-person events. However, we just had elections last week, and so no one want no one wanted to do anything to close down the uh, to close down um, businesses or to do another lockdown. 
and now that we have a new government, uh, everybody's kind of just holding their breath, to, waiting to see what will happen. But uh, we feel confident that people have it in their minds that the library is even more useful when we're stuck at home because we can check out books and the library will still be giving us useful, relevant activities in whatever capacity they can. So that's how, that's how our library uh, handled the pandemic. I'd have to say in terms of getting more people to be interested in the library and in terms of our staff being able to uh, meet the needs of their people. I think I think everybody grew, even though let's not do it again. <laughs> let's let's yeah. not do it again. <laughs> I know. Yes, Dalia. Unmute. Unmute. We can't hear you. Yes. Yes. So, um, I have something uh, something to say. Actually, the, the disaster that we leave for from our perspective, it was the the greatest uh, opportunity for education uh, and training why I, why am i saying this because uh, during the COVID, we uh, faced we faced a lot of um, fake news misinformation disinformation right. and uh, unrelevant information concerning the COVID and what how can we deal with this actually we uh, we uh, designed many uh, programs many online programs uh, um, uh, for educating the public the general public how they can use the information what is the media information literacy what is the information literacy how they can use effectively the library why they do uh, why they do have uh, to use the library and also Mm -hmm. we, uh, we, uh, we, we developed like an assessment forms for our users uh, to know what they can need during this uh, pandemic or during this uh, period of time. So the hybrid learning, it was one of uh, the challenges that schools and universities um, have faced. So the students could not cope between um the hybrid learning and the online sessions they are not um, able to learn through this um through this uh, style of learning and the teachers and professors also they do not have the skills to deliver an interactive content to the students so this pandemic was a great ch chance to educate the students the people the the professors the general public um, the self-learning, the digital content creation, how they can use effectively the information um, and much more uh, in this field of education and training. And it was a very good chance for us to reach more, uh, more uh, users for our uh, library using our electronic and digital library and digital resources. On other hand, actually the publishers has another thought uh, regarding the um, the uh, let's say the contracts and the accessibility of the open access resources. Yeah. Uh, before but the pandemic, it was very restricted, but now we had we, I mean, there, there are um, another thinking to uh, have another look on the open access resources for the public, so they can use right. the resources. So it, it was a, yani it was a positive. This was the positive side of the education and the library, actually. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, anybody else has anything else to say? Well, can we? Yeah, go ahead. So of course we uh, developed uh, online technologies and. Uh, uh, created many programs uh, that and uh, many videos that uh, presentations that people could uh, watch uh, and uh, read through our webs at our website. But what I think we did uh, some uh, an interesting project about mobile books. That is uh, when people with disabilities and aged people who are not aware of uh, of uh, online technologies, computer technologies, wanted to read something, they could apply, they used phone and uh, asked for books. We used uh, volunteers who brought the books to people's homes and uh, 
uh, also took the books that they had read and brought them to the library. So this is what we did. And uh, it was uh, uh, adjacent areas to the library that we served this way. Thank you, Pavel. And uh, I'll just finish off here. Um, uh, we saw an opportunity also as well to, to examine different ways of providing a hybrid educational uh, options for our community. But we felt like we had to be much more aggressive in some of the things that we did around COVID for our community. So we uh, started signing up folks um, actually to go and get tested months ago when uh, we were really struggling. So people would call us and we would actually set them up for their, sign them up for their, um, to, to go in and actually get their vaccine shots. Um, we then started using our parking lots to provide um, as the, as vaccine uh, uh, posts for, for the hospitals to come in and give out the vaccine shots in our, in our parking lot. And then recently, uh, this is us, county library, many of the other libraries, we've been giving out uh, testing kits that um, we've been giving out basically wow. thousands per week through our libraries. So there are ways that we felt like we had to be much more a part of the process of moving our community yeah. to be vaccinated so that we can do the educational piece on the other side. Oh, wow. Thank you, everybody. This has been such a wonderful uh, panel. Um, I always feel like we need more time. <laughs> and uh, maybe they should not have me as moderator because I always want to ask more questions. And I always feel like we need more more time to discuss some of these things. But I want to thank you again for being part of this panel. And I want to hand it over back to Sanjay, if you can wrap up and, and our more, our sponsors and then uh, um, I'll be sure to keep in touch with each one of you. I know that I will because I have so many questions and I also want to learn from you. There's, there's so much information that we've exchanged here and I believe that we can all keep in touch with each other and learn from each other. So thank you again. Sanjay? You well, can... I want to thank everybody from around the world. It really has been a great you know, learning experience for me to hear about the efforts in Russia and the Czech Republic and Egypt and obviously here in Cleveland. Uh, thank you, Peggy, and uh, thank you to Global Cleveland, and we will look forward to seeing all of you in person next year. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Sorry about that. Bye bye. No, bye. Nice to meet you. Bye. Um, bye. I'm you all actually next year or maybe this year. I'm waiting for <laughs> all of you. So we have we have Christmas coming up, and I may get some time off. So, so you can. <laughs> so think, can you can come during Christmas or after Christmas as you wish. You are. I'm very welcome. compact. I fit easily into most overhead storage compartments. I do a lot of yoga. So I'm very comfortable. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank oh, you so much, Ali. Ali. Yeah. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. It was a great honor actually to be with you. Likewise, I feel exactly the same way. It was such a pleasure to meet you, and I'm looking you forward too. to continued collaboration. Please, and, please. Um, I would love to say go Buckeyes, but my mother went to University of Michigan, so I think uh -huh. I would be disowned. <laughs> and also, I would say go Browns, but oh, I can't oh, really. Yeah. Beautiful. So I'm, I'm glad you said all the nice things you did about collaboration and cooperation beforehand, because I think you might want to take them all back now, but now you have two witnesses, so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we will see. We will see. Yes. And hopefully we get a chance to visit you and, you know, uh, please, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, we tend to go every, every, we send one of our board members to IFLA. So we hopefully, if you guys have an opportunity right. to go to Israel, we'll get a right. chance to see Oh, you that there. would be wonderful. But I would like true. to go to the Czech Republic and check out that beer. 
So. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> my, my husband and I love showing people all of the hidden gems of the country. So if you want the insider, non touristy view, um, let us know for sure. We're happy to take you to all the places. That's good. Yeah. Thank you, Annie. It was no a problem. Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you, Doug. It was nice to meet you. Bye. Okay. Have a Bye. great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. We'll Bye -bye. keep in touch. All right. Yes, definitely. Bye -bye. Please. Yes, Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.